to Would I Lie to You, the show that separates fact from fiction. On Lee Mac's team tonight, a presenter who has DJed on Rinse FM and Radio 1, which means our viewers will know her from when their children have changed the station on the radio. <laughs> it's Maya Jama. <laughs> And a TV doctor who's presented some of the most thrilling medical television since I watched the video of my own colonoscopy <laughs> is Dr. Zand Van Tulliken. <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team tonight, an actor and comedian who says she turns up late for everything. It's true, she was meant to be on last week's show. It's <laughs> Rosine Conaty. <laughs> And a radio presenter whose dad and uncle were both in Spandau Ballet. No matter what else he says tonight, I know that much is true. <laughs> it's Roman Kemp. <laughs> uh, we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Maya is first tonight. Every morning, I wash my face with sparkling water. Oh, <laughs> right. David's team. What brand of sparkling water? To be honest, I don't actually have a brand. I have the machine at home, the, the bubbler machine. So oh, you like just like put... a, a, a soda stream. Soda streamers. Right. So do you have this machine in the bathroom? No. My routine is I wake up, put my little under-eye masks on, go down to the kitchen, bubble my water, come up, wash my face, and then get in the shower. That's exactly the same as Rob's routine. <laughs> well, I, I do bubble my water, but I think it means something else. <laughs> Why? Why do you do that? Why do what, I do it? Well... What, what's the point in having fizzy water on your face? I read once that if you use fizzy, bubbly, sparkly water on your face, it opens up the pores right. for whatever cleanser or face wash you're going to use, gets in there as oh, really good like well, that. We, we, have, we have a medical man, and I don't mean Lee. We've got Zand here. <laughs> is there any truth? I've never heard that. Is there truth it's, in that? It's interesting, Rob. At medical school, there is no lecture on preparing your face for cosmetics with spark. It's, like, not a thing. <laughs> but... All right, all right, smart Alec. <laughs> elevating you with that question, but if you want to have combat with me for the rest of the night, you are very welcome to it, my friend. That's quite a complex skin routine. Are you taking the fizzy water away with you? My, like, you know, travels oh, for yeah. work oh, a lot. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You travel for work a lot. What do you do when you're travelling for work? In every hotel minibar, there is a fizzy water. Ah, there she's is. got us. <laughs> so you go to a machine... What do you put the water in to bring it to the sink? Just like a bottle of water, empty bottle of water or a big mug, just do a couple of scoops. You see, oh. I would worry that my pores... I mean, my pores might be different, <laughs> but I would worry that my <laughs> pores... <laughs> the, the sort of acridness of the fizz would make my pores close up in fear. That did that sound like the start of a really bad advert that you were doing for skin cream. <laughs> the acridness of the fizz <laughs> makes me fearful. <laughs> but now, with oil of you, lay. <laughs> Right, what are you thinking? Is Maya telling the truth or is it a lie? My bit is, the details, is the bringing the water, she said, a bottle or a mug. A mug is that much water, that's not doing a face. And then you put the stuff on... No, but it's just whatever's you... next to the sink. You know, sometimes that's you might what, have an empty oven. If you do every day, you'd have a set system. But yeah, the sink... it's exactly. It's a very fastidious process <laughs> <laughs> that you're undergoing. But the idea that, oh, I don't know, that's a, that had a lasagna in it yesterday. <laughs> Fine, I'll use that. So what are you going to say? Instinctively, I think it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? We're gonna go lie. OK. Uh, Maya, truth or lie? It is... A lie! Oh, well done. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Maya doesn't wash her face in sparkling water. Uh, Zan, you're next. I once had a race with another medical student to see who could wheel their patient to X-ray first, but in doing so, I tripped and I broke my own finger. <laughs> right, David's team. It does sound exactly like the sort of thing medical students yeah. do, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? So, um, paint but, a picture of the scene. Uh, so, I had a, a good friend called Andrew. Um, we frequently, as medical students, would just... You're meant to pitch in and be useful any way you can. And you thought a race was pitching in and being useful? <laughs> I thought taking the patient to X-ray was pitching in and being right, useful. Right, OK. Anyone in this room... 
if you once you're side by side with a friend with a human you both got a human in a wheelchair <laughs> you race i'm glad you were still thinking of them as humans did they not look at you like i've broken my leg what are you doing well, did, no, I, I don't think they needed a leg x-ray. It might have just been a, um, a repeat chest x-ray or something like that. They're, they're recovering from pneumonia. It was probably something... It was that kind of thing. So they're, their they're ability to breathe they're... quickly at pace is better. <laughs> <laughs> they're not racing. They're just sitting there. <laughs> like, uh, like a jockey. Like a jockey. How did they respond to this kindness? They were up for it. They were up for it. It's very boring being in hospital. You're waiting for discharge. You're waiting. Oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> You're waiting to go home, and so a bit of action. The medical students are fun. We'd got to know them. Bit of a race down the corridor. So what happened then? You say you, you broke your finger. How did that happen? I hadn't wheeled anyone fast before, <laughs> and a wheelchair <laughs> pivots hard. And so once I started to turn to protect, to save the person in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you were in this to save lives. <laughs> I had, I, to save the person in the chair, I then had to, had to stop quickly and tripped over. Did you have it x-rayed? Yes. Did you push ahead? Go, never mind these guys. <laughs> this is just their, their second <laughs> congratulations on kicking pneumonia x-ray. There's a total waste of public money, if you ask me. <laughs> Do my finger. Embarrassingly, I think I did. <laughs> so what do you think? Is he telling the truth, Roisin? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Roman. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily something that he personally did or if it was something that he'd heard about that had maybe happened. And he dines well, out on yeah. it. Yeah, so I might go with a lie. I know, you know, Russian yeah. says it's down I to think you. it's a lie as well now. I've changed my mind. Oh. <laughs> what made you change your mind? Because it's a story. It's very conveniently about being a doctor. And that's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But thought about another way. Because he is one, he might have stories about being one. <laughs> you think it's a lie now? What do you think? I think it's true. I just thought it was true from the start. Uh, OK, they're saying it's true. Zan, it's truth or lie? It is... a lie. Oh, oh. Good. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Zan didn't break his finger racing to an X-ray. Uh, Roisin, you're next. Oh, OK. I once failed an acting exam after my plan to impress the teacher backfired. Right, Lee's team. Okay. Right, what age was this? 18. So you're doing your A-level for drama? Theatre studies. Theatre studies. And what was your plan? The plan was I needed to cry during a monologue and I was doing a Dublin accent. Oh, give us a little blast. <laughs> oh, no, because your parents are Irish. They're not from Dublin. I've met her family. I met her sister. I introduced her to my wife, Tara, and I said, this is Tara. Um... Who's very beautiful. Ridiculously beautiful. Yes, it doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how unright it seems. She went, oh, did you, did you meet after he was, like, sort of a well-known <laughs> comedian? <laughs> and, and she went, no, before, which is true. We met before I ever did comedy. And she went, oh, did he save your life or something? <laughs> <laughs> that was unbelievable. <laughs> I didn't know for five minutes. <laughs> OK, so this was a sad monologue. Sad monologue, and uh, a, a woman, she's leaving a pram at the airport, and I needed to cry, and I needed the grade for my uni application. I needed to pass theatre studies. My plan was to use an onion to make myself cry so that I really, you know, like, Oscar bait, get the exam. Well, really... well you weren't intended to do the monologue and then start cutting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I went had onion in my pocket with, like, an entry area so I could stick my hands in. So I touched my eyes... Without I, him seeing that you'd put your hand, just sort of. I was did doing it. my acting. I was like, oh, I love a sword and loyalty, mad circus, and I was just doing, touching my. That eyes. was good accent. So that, that, that was the accent, was it? That was the accent. Very yeah. good. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. And so I do that, and then I touch my eyes, and then I thought, oh, actually, it's quite a bit longer to go on this bit. <laughs> and obviously, so I'm not meant to be at the tears bit yet. And then obviously my eyes starts going, and I'm just like trying to keep it together because I'm not meant to be crying yet. And then I have to get the pram to bring it off the stage. <laughs> But I can't see. And I finished the monologue like that. And, uh, and I have to just walk off. Did just... he find out, the teacher? Oh, yeah, she came up, she came she up to came... me straight up and she went, Onion? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking then, Maya? I don't know. I think dedication to the cause. But onions are that shape, aren't they? So you'd see a little bulge in whatever jacket and stuff that you had on. Mm. I, I don't think she would do it. I think it's someone might have done it, but I don't, I don't think so. You don't think it's true? 
OK, well, I am going to say, then, it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Right, Roisin, truth or lie? It is... true. Whoa. Whoa. Yes, it's true. Roisin really did use an onion to make herself cry. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Martin. <laughs> so, uh, Zand, what is Martin to you? This is Martin and when I accidentally shaved off a chunk of my beard, he lent me some of his. <laughs> uh, Maya, how do you know Martin? OK, so this is Martin, and he once exercised my car because I thought it was haunted. <laughs> and finally, Lee, your relationship with Martin. This is Martin. He freed me after I got my fingers stuck in a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. David, where do you want to begin? Zand, um, so he so he lent you a section of his beard. Yes, so I I had shaved off that side of my my beard by mistake, and H I needed. How did you do to, that? You put the teeth on the beard trimmer so that you, and you have to adjust it. Yes. And I didn't put the teeth on, and shaved my cheek twice. Zup zup, cleared the cheek. Then I needed replacement beard hair. <laughs> and and where where does this chap come in? I was filming um, a television programme the next day and the problem was that we'd already filmed some of it and so I had to keep the beard and I also have it in my contract that I always have to have a beard because I have an identical twin brother and without the beard I, I look like him and then I can't I don't think you, I don't think that would be a problem because you still had some of the beard. I think you'd still be distinguishable from your... Unless oh, he had madly <laughs> grown a partial beard. <laughs> OK, so how do you come into contact with someone? Is this, a, is this a service that someone provides whereby if you misshave, he'll help you out? No. Do you regret your Brazilian? <laughs> <laughs> well, with the help of this man's what hairy this? face... <laughs> so, Martin is a, a, a sound person or an acoustic engineer on the TV show that I was working on, and he kindly... Um, trimmed off a bit of his beard and, and allowed me to glue it to my face. <laughs> so how many days did you have to film? Because presumably you'd have to remove this hair at the end of the day. You can't go to bed with that, can you? So at the end of the day, Martin gave me an envelope of his um, beard trimmings. Yeah, he oh, it get off. away. <laughs> I, 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 carried, I carried the envelope. I had to film for, for, for the rest of the weekend, in fact, into the next week. And so for no. about five or six days, I was gluing... I had some eyelash glue and I because was gluing... Because he gave you an envelope of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave you a couple of clumps on that first day and at the end of the day, he said, well, there you go, that'll see you through <laughs> until the middle of next week. So, and he must have lost a fair bit of his, then. It's a huge... It's a it's mighty a, beard. It's a dense beard, I will say. That. <laughs> <laughs> his beard does it like a, a feeder beard. Like, mm. it's designed just to feed other beards. Yes. <laughs> like it, yes, it's, it's a like... wholesaler beard. <laughs> <laughs> right, who would you like to quiz next? Uh, Maya, this car. What, yeah. What model of car was it? Mercedes 500. And what made you think it needed exorcising? OK, well, I have quite a spiritual nan, spiritual Swedish nan, yeah. and sh I was telling her that there's just... It's always quite cold. There's two seats in the car. It's always quite cold. It feels like there's wind coming in, even when all the windows and there's no holes in it or anything like that. And sometimes when I go into my car park, which is underground, I, I have felt like someone touched me a couple of times, just on the shoulder or, like, there. And so I told her about it, and she was like, I know this guy, Martin. And it's probably him. <laughs> 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 she said, you should have a little chat with Martin. He does this kind of thing. He goes and he'll get rid of the bad spirits and stuff like that. And if it is your new car, then it's, it's best that you get it sorted out, you know? i, I got to say, you, yeah. you did say... So your nan's Swedish? Yeah. Martin does look strikingly Scandinavian. He yes, does, he actually, does, yeah, doesn't yes. he? You could imagine him on a hardwood floor. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> does, um, what are you doing on this hardwood floor, uh, Rob? Being Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's a hardwood floor for a while. With high-quality hi-fi, nice speakers. 
<laughs> so your nan said that he does this sort of thing. What does she mean by that? Well, he's a medium. That's what these sort of people well, do. Well, a medium is not the same as an exorcist. Well, does I was going to say, medium isn't the same as an extra large. <laughs> 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 To be clear, he is not a priest. No, he, he doesn't. That's, more, that's your classic person who can do exorcism. Yeah. Is yeah. a priest. Yeah, it's yeah, no. They do cars, though. <laughs> I mean, I know things have gone bad for the church, but <laughs> exorcism quite a loose term here because I, I, I know there are a lot of people that they, they clear energy. Yeah, like so, they read your cards and they so, say, "Oh, there's someone in the room," and that kind of stuff. So he's more a more of a general charlatan. <laughs> he's a ghost. <laughs> If it's true, I'm going to get killed, but it's not true because he got my finger stuck in a bowling ball and yeah, helped yeah, that's right. it's true. So, so, Maya, talk yeah. us through what he did for so, you. So, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't in the car. It's a two-seater. He got in the car. I stayed a little bit away. So, there wasn't room for you and him <laughs> and the ghost. Of course not. <laughs> and then, basically, I watched from a distance. He was shouting for a little while. And then he did vibrate a little bit. And then what? that was about it. So, like this. <laughs> so, you were a bit like further that. away. So, did you see him just. <laughs> I just saw a shaking you're, you're bearded man. In your car. What was Could he saying? Did you see his hands? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's important. I can't remember. <laughs> his hands were on show. All right. His He's... hands were on show, yeah. as far as we know. And yeah. how did he finish? Well. <laughs> Roman Kent, <laughs> what would your listeners think? Oh. <laughs> no, how did it end? He, he came out of the car and then he said, well, I've done what I can, I've had a word. <laughs> done what I can. <laughs> she yeah, does so well and then she gets to the end and she's like, then he just cries and says, see you later, why don't you go? <laughs> it's almost no. the last bit that no, you just drop the ball. I'm having a lot, I'm playing along. But he, he did, he said he basically had finished what he needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> he'd come to the end of the exorcism. So, did he give you any feedback about what he'd cleared? Well, he did, he looked at me and he said, like that. <laughs> 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 No, he acknowledged the fact that there was, in fact, something so, in so there. So, he didn't say, you've wasted your money no. hiring me. That needed doing. He confessed. <laughs> that was a big one in there. Yeah. OK, so, so what exactly did Martin say that he found? Well, he wasn't... That clear, I'll be honest. He just said it was a spirit. I think there's levels to this ghost talking stuff. Like spirit it levels. How how <laughs> far? <laughs> <in> the... <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what what about uh, Lee? Remind <laughs> us, Lee, of, of your claim. Uh, this is Martin, and he once helped me when I got my fingers stuck in a bowling ball. Oh. So w when was this? This was about a year ago. And, and who, are you, who are you bowling with? Family trip? Uh, it was my my son's birthday. Oh. What was Martin's job at the, the bowling alley? He, he didn't have a job at the bowling alley. He was in the lane next to me. Um, yeah. Which finger got stuck? It was the two... Those two fingers got stuck. They both got stuck. I know. Wow. <laughs> and above the knuckle... Did you... Did Not you tonight, darling. Did you... <laughs> did you... No, did you... Put, did you plunge them, them in? So I went into the ball, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that. Like that. I'm thinking, hello. And then I'm thinking, it's the something. I've got. Oh, I've picked up the wrong ball. Picked up a 12 kilogram, not a 14. <sighs> I've only gone and put my fingers in. All that's too small. My fingers are stuck. Oh well. Give me something to talk about on the show. So how, how did he get that? <laughs> how, how did he get that? He said, "Are you all right, mate?" And I said, "I've actually got my fingers stuck in the ball." And he said, "Well, can I help you?" I said, "I don't know. Are you qualified?" And he said, no, I've never done anything like this in my life. I said, well, neither have I. That's two of us. <laughs> this so... is sounding quite romantic now. Mm. Oh, yeah, so I touched his face gently but knocked him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, then later he came round. Yes. And... <laughs> yeah. I said, how did you get my address? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he said, can I help you? I said, you tell me. So he said, all right, let's see if we can pull it off. Yeah. So he, he held on. <laughs> the children held my arm as he pulled. Right. And it didn't work. So he said, uh, why don't I go to the kitchen and get something to use as a sort of lubricant? OK. <laughs> and he came back with quite a large tub of butter. When he's gently lubing your fingers up... Yeah. ..and it's a man you've never met before and your wife's off and it's just you and him, what were you talking about? Oh, you know, we were chewing the fat. And he said, don't, we'll need that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
is that what did it? The, did eventually, the, the lubrication and the excessive pulling and a little bit more pulling from the opposite direction from my wife and, and the kids at the party resulted in a... <laughs> and out it came. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we need an answer. Uh. So, so David's team, is Martin Zahn's bearded buddy Maya's car cleanser or Lee's finger freer? I think I, I'm sceptical about Lee's story, mm. but the problem is that the other two stories are one is that he exercised a car <laughs> and the other is that he lent some beard hair. <laughs> so... it's, no, it's definitely uh, Zander. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. We're that's fine. fine. So you're willing to accept that this man took clippings from his own beard, put them into an envelope, <laughs> Gave them to Zand, and he then stuck them onto his face. Rob, if, if you were if you were to take trimmings of your beard, what exactly? And you had to give them to someone. What exactly are you meant to be putting them in anyway? Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say he worked in? He worked in the audio department. He Jazz could yeah. work in the audio department, yeah. but also he could be a Scandinavian exorcist. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> I haven't seen many Scandinavian. Could work in a bowling exorcist. alley. <laughs> no, he didn't work in a bowling oh, yeah, alley, sorry. did he? He just <laughs> had to be there. <laughs> No, hang on, he didn't work. That's why I was getting confused, cos he was temping. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Maya, do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, I, I believe in do. ghosts. Do you? Why do you believe in ghosts? Why not? Well, because they patently... Oh, don't you're not going to lodge it on me. <laughs> we no, well, they're they're <laughs> OK, if there's so many ghosts, well, if ghosts exist, why are they always in isolated places rather than absolutely cramming central London? I don't think People have been living and dying in misery in central London for 2,000 years <laughs> in that square mile. You shouldn't be able to move <laughs> for ghouls. And yet that's, you don't see them there in the modern office plot no. or with the plague or being eaten by a lion in Roman times or having their head chopped off for no reason reason. Oh, no, it's in one pub where a total of 2,000 people have lived ever. That's where the ghosts hang. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So what are you going to say, David? OK. What are you going to say? Well, it's 100% Zander. Right, well, are we happy to go with that? I think so. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go with that. You're saying it's Zand. OK. Yeah. Um, Martin, <laughs> would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Martin, and I lent Zander my beard. <laughs> Yes, Martin is Zahn's bearded buddy. Thank you very much, Martin. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, and we start with... <clears throat> it's uh, Roman. I had to secretly put my clothes on during a Zoom call so the pop star I was interviewing wouldn't realise I was naked. <laughs> All right, please do. OK, just for David's sake, what, what is a pop star? <laughs> Someone within the realm of popular music. Yeah, who, Bing who Crosby and the like. Uh, Bing Crosby, yeah. The, the, pop, the pop star Bing in question Crosby. was Justin Timberlake. But wait, JT. did you know in advance that you were going to have this Zoom? Um, I didn't necessarily know the time because I was asleep. What time is it UK time? 5 pm. What were you wearing at the start of the meeting? Nothing. Literally nothing. At nothing. five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. You don't butt naked nap in the afternoon. Like, you do naked naps in the morning-ish if you haven't left the house yet. Na full naked at five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, Why? I've done that. Yeah. Naked. I don't think I... Picture it, Maya! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this with no clothes on and a pipe in the mouth. <laughs> So he didn't no. notice. You got through the whole of the interview. He had no idea. I've woken up, I've realised I was late, um, didn't have any clothes on. And at that point, I've realised, OK, just quickly get there and put a T-shirt on, cos I know that, obviously, it's only top half. Join the call. Yes. It's <laughs> worse. Yeah. Because yeah. It's just if, if you see someone in a T-shirt and then so you're like, what the...? <laughs> Whereas if he's all naked, you go, he's got out of the shower, he's timed it wrong, but a T-shirt, you think, why dress that half first? <laughs> I think, as well, me and him have the same manager and she's very organised and I feel like she wouldn't have let you miss a call cos she rings my phone, like, a hundred million times Whoa. before calls. Yeah, but she's not as interested in his career. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, yeah. this is very much your world, the way you talked about your manager, and it was exciting. Yeah, no, I mean... Because <laughs> you're... Rob, Rob, you're still looking for representation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in London now for 30 years yeah. and fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think it is very believable, but I just think Justin Timberlake's a massive artist. You would have been prepared for it. So I think it's a lie. I think when you call Justin Timberlake, there's layers of people, aren't there? 
Mate, have you ever interviewed anyone one to one so you don't go via? Do you, can you literally press Zoom and now you're interviewing someone? Yeah, I did Madison Beer and we had her and me only on the screen. You mean the Madison Beer? <laughs> yes, <laughs> your favourite. You have Madison Beer. <laughs> David, she had Madison Beer. Madison Beer, that's what? heir to the beer fortune. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big business beer, isn't it? <laughs> okay, what's your team thinking, Lee? So what do we think? I I'm going to go with the lie. Okay. I think it's a lie. Lie. They're all saying it's a lie. Roman. It's a lie. I really wish it was a lie, cos it's actually true. Ah! <laughs> yes, it's true. Roman really did interview Justin Timberlake in the nude. Uh, next. <clears throat> it's David. Last year, I was asked to remove my jumper in a restaurant after the table next door complained that its bold pattern was ruining their photographs. <laughs> Please, team. OK, so when you're not with us, you're a bit more bold, are you? Yeah, well, I didn't think it was a bold pattern, I just thought it was rather natty. Could you describe the bold jumper? There's sort of lines like that, and we're looking at yellows and browns and a little touch of blue and green, and then a sort of zigzag thing like that. Sounds quite 80s. Well, you know, I, I think it's timeless. <laughs> <laughs> We've never done this before, yeah. I would I lie to you, but are we allowed to ask this lady to just stand forward into the middle of the floor? Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Could you stand in the middle of the floor, don't you? <laughs> Was it that bold? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Who were you with at the time? Mm. Uh, I was uh, I was with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do? Did did you take the jumper off? I I did, I'm afraid. Um, uh, because they asked politely, <laughs> and so I did it. And I didn't realise how humiliating the request was until <laughs> I'd gone along with it. Yeah, it's embarrassing. You know, just the slow takeoff. Did you do yeah, a quick yeah, absolutely. one? Absolutely, and exactly. It's a very taking a jumper off is a bit of a kerfuffle. For example, before James Bond has a fight, you don't see him take a jumper off <laughs> because it's not the right sort. Of, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's the hair's got a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the least yeah. attractive removal scene. It, it's exa exactly. Strippers don't wear jumpers, <laughs> do they? It's not the right. <laughs> it's not the sort of thing. Did they realise? that you were the esteemed actor, broadcaster, writer, or do they think you were just a sad middle-aged man still having dinner with his parents? <laughs> the two aren't mutually exclusive. What was the name of the restaurant? It was the Ivy Restaurant in St John's Wood. You've just lost your working-class audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheerio! <laughs> so... David is really... Well, he's asking us to believe that he's spineless. So, what do you think? <laughs> I think so. You're saying true? I think true, yeah. I think it's a true story. Oh, OK, well, then I must go with my team and say this is definitely true. OK, uh, David, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Oh! <laughs> That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. And I can reveal that David's team have won by five points to one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.